girl magic. Got your attention. You know body like them Donald. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pussy better tend to run a fumble. Mm -hmm. Talked out of shit and must have thought I was a runner. Mm -hmm. Megan told y'all it's a hot girl summer. Mm -hmm. Pretty ass pretty bad. I'm so nasty. What is up, you guys? Your girl Renita Elaine, and we is back up in this thing, y'all. And we back with another lit ass video. If you're an OG subscriber, welcome back to this side. Y'all already know how we get down. If you're a new subscriber, welcome to the side. We're full of positive energy and vibes only. So if you with that negative shit, you better go elsewhere because we ain't with that shit, okay? Period. Make sure y'all like up this video, comment below, and hit that bell so you're always notified when your girl is about to upload another lit and video, y'all. All right, y'all. As y'all read by the title, this is EP what 2023 20, ep 23 so yeah get your drinkity drink 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 your smokity smoke 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 whatever it is you like to indulge in when you're listening or watching my story times and yeah let's get into the story uh, a little disclaimer, as y'all can see, Miss Rachel is doing her thing in the back <laughs> while I tell this story. So my daughter is around the way, drinking her bottle and watching Miss Rachel. Hopefully, hopefully, I pray to God that girl does not act a fool, okay? So I can get through this story time right now, all right? So yeah, if y'all hear a little bit of Miss Rachel in the back, I'm sorry, I tried to turn it down, but just try to block it out i might have to edit it to where i mute the sound in the background or something like that so anyway so yeah ep 23 okay y'all so we left off where i found out that i am now pregnant not only am i pregnant i also found out that it's a possibility that sister wife is pregnant with narcs baby okay y'all he dropped the bomb on me in march um, the month before the baby was supposed to be born, okay? He dropped that little bomb on me. Now, let me take it back a little bit because I know some of you are new here, so y'all probably haven't seen, like, the other videos, the older videos of when I initially talked about this situation. So, let me bring it back to where, because some people were asking me about the whole, like, four months thing of him not talking to her and blah, 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 blah. So, basically, y'all, whenever we went on that road trip, me and him went on a road trip to Louisiana. So, when we went on that road trip to Louisiana, around that time like he knew that she was pregnant right i just didn't know so from that time all the way up until i don't want to say march because i think he's he started um communicating with her a little before march or whatever but in march he basically told me that he hadn't when he first broke the news to me he told me that he hadn't spoken to her for like four months like it was a whole ordeal he was mad about it blah 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 blah. right so he had he had basically ghosted the girl for four months because she decided that she was going to keep her baby all right cool so now that we all understand what was going on with the whole four months thing that's what was going on because it was a couple people that asked me that or whatever so yeah that's basically what happened so he wasn't talking to her and then he you know around the time where the baby was about to be born you know i'm assuming that he reached out to her to talk to her try to like you know because it could possibly be his baby or whatever so yeah if it is then he needed to be there okay as he should right so anyway, let's go back up a little bit, okay? And I'll probably uh, attach the other video that I'm talking about so y'all could just go and watch it if y'all want like detail by detail. I'll probably do that as well. So anyway, I found out that I'm pregnant. Now, when I found out that I was pregnant, I'm not going to lie. I was happy, but I had mixed emotions. Now, at the time that he told me like this girl could possibly be pregnant, mind you, he wasn't with the girl, but at the time that they were fooling around, that end up happening right so at this time like i told y'all before i was in the Lulu land thinking like oh maybe you know we about to you know get married this and a third like it's gonna happen like da -da -da -da. i'm in the Lulu land at this point okay but after he told me this yes i was hurt i was extremely hurt but i still didn't know that if this was his baby or not and i know i told y'all in the last video like i was literally praying heavily like that this child was not his you know what i'm saying like i was really praying heavily that it was not but if it was you know of course i wanted him to do the right thing and step up and be a dad of course i wanted him to do the right thing you know but at the same time i didn't know how i was going to handle that if it was his i just didn't know how things were going to play out right 
And in my mind at this time, like from him, from what he's saying, like he's not with her, he's not having a relationship with her, you know, but she's possibly having his child. So if it is his, he's definitely going to be there for his child. So in my mind, they're not in a relationship. They're not still messing around, fooling around, doing none of that. But he's going to step up and be a dad if it is his child. Okay, boom. So that's what was going on. So at this time, you know, I still having like, I'm still having a hard time, like, coping with what's going on but i'm still me and him are still of course together because now i found out that i'm pregnant so like i said when i found out i was pregnant it was a lot of mixed emotions it was like i was happy but at the same time i couldn't really be happy because i didn't know what the outcome was going to be with his other situation that was going on um, with the possibility of that being his child. I did not know. Um, he basically told me like when he knows he's going to get a DNA test when the baby is born and he's going to find out. Woo -woo -woo. This is what he told me, right? So cool, fine. That happened. Time is passing by and my pregnancy, I'm not going to lie, my first pregnancy that I had, like I was going through it. Like I was going through it a lot. Like I was very, very sick on my first pregnancy. I was just going through a lot and then at the time i know y'all watch my older story times i was wa working for this marketing company and when i was working for them y'all like it was horrible working for them and being pregnant like i was under a lot of stress i had to be on my feet 24 7 all day and i was pregnant and at the time that company did not know that i was pregnant i was going back and forth to the hospital because i was having so many aches and pains i was just going through a lot during this time i was working with this company and if y'all saw them other story times i probably link them below um, so i can be more detailed over there y'all can go watch them videos as well but yeah girl your girl was going through a lot okay i'm not even gonna lie to you i was going through a lot not only that like i'm also stressed i'm dealing with stress from work i'm dealing with you know the narc situation back at home and just everything like that but you know he was like he at some points in time he would reassure me like that everything was gonna be okay like everything is gonna be good like i didn't have anything to worry about so you know at that time like that's what he was like making it seem as if everything was gonna be okay and even if this was his child you know what i'm saying we would be able to like work through this push through this and you know um just get through it together you know even though y'all I shouldn't even, I still should not be with him, okay? We all know this, but, you know, I just still could not let go, even though I know I should let go. And I was always the type of person before this situation happened, I always used to tell myself, if I was ever with a person and they had a baby on me, that's just, that's an easy, like, deal breaker you know what i'm saying i always used to say that like yeah i would leave i would do this do, do this and that la, da, da, da. that's why i always tell people stop saying what you wouldn't do because you never know what you would do until you're actually in that situation and when i was in that situation did i think about leaving him absolutely i thought about it was it as easy to leave him as you know, I thought it would be for me in the past when I said if this ever happened to me, I would just be gone and it would be no questions, no thought about it. No, it was not that easy because clearly I was still there. I stayed, you know what I mean? So that's that. So I'm in this situation. I'm stressed out. I'm pregnant, but I just prayed about it. And I'm just like, you know what? If it, if it happened, that means it's supposed to happen. It's meant to happen. You know, my baby's here then that means my baby is meant to happen. Even if that child was his, I already knew that, you know, that child is meant to be here for a reason, even if it does turn out to be his child. Um, because that baby didn't ask to be here. You know what I'm saying? Like kids are really just off limits when it comes to like situations between like, you know, you and the other person as well as, you know, sister wife goes, you know what I'm saying? Cause they did not ask to be here, you know, her child or my child did not ask to be here whatsoever. So they're innocent. So, but like I told y'all in the beginning of the story time, like if that was his child, I wanted him, I didn't want him to be a deadbeat dad. I wanted him to actually be there in his child's life. You know what I'm saying? And I just didn't know what was going to happen between me and him, but like I was, I don't know. I guess I was hopeful that things would turn around for the better. I felt like maybe 
if this situation is what it is that we could get through it together maybe it will grow us stronger together child i don't know how another baby was gonna grow us stronger together because we done been through hell and back and none of that has grown us stronger together obviously like damn like i done been through some shit with this man but um so yeah that was just my thought process at that time so going back to me like working and stuff like that and being sick within my pregnancy um, it was rough on me i went to the hospital like two or three times the third time i went to the hospital well no the second time i went to the hospital i was scared because they were basically you know telling me that they couldn't really see my baby anymore so at that point in time i was getting nervous i was getting scared and also at this time y'all on my platform i hadn't told y'all that i was pregnant yet because i was waiting until i was about to hit my three month mark and around this time when i was going to the hospital it was like in may so i was about to hit my three month mark i believe like in june so it, i just had like a few a few more weeks until i was about to hit that mark of being you know three months pregnant and then i was gonna break the news to all of you so when i went to the hospital in may the second time i went to the hospital they were basically like they did ultrasound on me and they were like oh we can't really see the baby anymore um we're not really sure what's going on but you know uh we gonna have somebody else we gonna have the doctor come in and speak to you and at this time they couldn't really tell me they didn't want to tell me why they couldn't see the baby or whatever the case may be because they wanted the doctor to come in there and be the one to tell me so the doctor came in and you know he was just kind of like making small talk and i'm like listen just let me know like what's going on with my baby is my baby gonna be okay and at the time when I went in, I went in for like back pain. Like I told y'all, I was I was working where I had to stand up all day long on my feet. And the particular day that I went to the hospital, I was working and I left work super early just to go to the emergency room. So I left and I went to the emergency room and yeah. So I basically was telling them like, don't be around a bush with me. Like what's going on? My baby, is my baby okay? Is my baby fine? They were just like, oh, I mean, we, it's just, we having a hard time seeing the baby. You know, you are, you know, you are early on, even though you're almost three months and we really just can't really see the baby in the sack. It seemed like anymore but we just gonna give it some time like give it another week or two and then come back in i'm like another week or two like why do i need to wait so long like can y'all do like some more tests tonight or just like do another ultrasound or whatever because i'm really trying to figure this out y'all because i'm worried about my baby so they were just like well no we just need you to come back in in another week or two so i leave and i still don't really you know feel good about the information that I'm receiving. So now I'm like even more stressed out. And you know, when you're pregnant, you're not supposed to stress like whatsoever at all. And I was stressing out. Y'all, when I tell y'all I was stressed, I was stressed, okay? Um, and I was trying not to be, y'all. I was really trying not to stress myself out about the situation. So I left. I ended up telling Nark what was going on. And he was just like, you know, everything's going to be okay. We're going to pray about it. Everything's going to be good. And, and our baby's going to be fine. Like, you don't have nothing to worry about. So I'm taking his word for it as well. And I'm just like, you're right. Everything's going to be cool. Mind you, this is May, y'all. Remember I told you the baby was supposed to be born in April, right? Baby supposed to be born in April. He still has not, remember I told y'all, he said he was gonna tell me like when the baby was born, and you know, if the baby was his. Mind you, I was scared to ask him like, hey, like, did she have the baby? Cause I didn't know whether the baby was gonna be born in the beginning, April, middle of April, end of April. I just did not know, okay? I didn't know at all. And when I went to the doctor, it was like close to the beginning of May when I went. And I still had not heard nothing from him. He still hadn't told me nothing yet. So I'm still in the back of my head. When this man is around me, I'm like giving him the side eye. Like, like what's going on? Like he hasn't really said much. And then part of me was like, well, if he hasn't said anything to me, maybe that means that it just wasn't his baby. And he just don't feel the need to, to tell me or say anything because it's not his baby like I'm just being I don't know I'm just in my head because I like I really just didn't want that to be you know our reality at that moment you know what I'm saying so he didn't say nothing I didn't say nothing but I'm still thinking about it in the back of my head as I'm going through 
what I'm going through at that time. So boom, y'all. So I still haven't heard nothing. I'm still like wondering in my head, like, did, did he already had a baby? But I didn't say nothing. I'm just trying not to stress myself out. And a part of me just didn't want to know. I feel like, and then I also feel like a part of me knew that that was his baby. And I just could not come to terms with it at the time. I didn't want to come to terms with it at the time. But something was telling me like in my gut, in my gut, in my core, y'all, that that baby was his. So fast forward, like I said, back to like, it was in May when I went to the doctor, whatever the case may be. And I still don't know if this baby is his or not because he still hasn't said nothing, okay? So yeah, another week. So like two weeks go by. I go back to the doctor. I think I went back to the doctor. No, it was like a, yeah, about like a week and a half, week, two weeks or something like that. I think I went back to the doctor like May 13th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or is that when I actually had my miscarriage or got rid of the baby i don't know but i went back to the doctor anyway y'all. i went back to the doctor and they did no i went to my OBGYN and she did some tests on me to see where my hcg levels were basically because they basically told me again once again that they did not see my baby in the sack my baby was no longer in my sack so normally that means that you're you already had your miscarriage or you're in the midst of having your miscarriage so yeah so my mom was just all over the place i'm like oh my gosh i'm gonna lose my baby um i was just about to hit my three month mark and now i'm about to i'm having a miscarriage so i went to my doctor she's doing all these tests on me she was just like we're gonna see what your acg levels are if they're still going up then that means you don't have nothing to worry about if they're going down then basically that means that you are having a miscarriage right now so we did our test fast forward because I got some other videos on this already. I don't want to go too much in depth, but fast forward, um, I did my test. I got my ACG levels back and they were going down. So that happened and I had like so many mixed emotions. I was hurt. I was sad. Not only that, y'all, I'm going through this miscarriage and... The crazy thing about it, all I could think of was that he's about, he's probably, he's has a baby basically. Like now he's about to have a baby because the baby is already here because the baby was born in April, but we're in May now. It was like May 13th or it was May something, whatever, that I found out that I was having my miscarriage or whatever. So that's basically all I could think about. I was sad about my baby. And I was crying about that, but I was also had so many other things going on mentally in my head that I was also thinking about that revolved around that particular situation, okay? So, boom, I go in the car, I call, I think I end up calling my mama first. I call my mama first. If y'all know, I'm super close to my mama. I love her to death. That is my girl. That is my dog, okay? That's my girl. I love my mama. So, I call my mama first. And me and my mama, we talked on the phone. I broke the note, broke the nose, Lord Jesus. I broke the news to her. I gotta slow down because I feel like I'm talking too fast. But I broke the news to her. And of course I was bawling, crying. Like y'all, I was bawling, bawling, crying. And you know, she just gave me some encouraging words, like um, just to try to uplift me. Just let me know that it's okay. It's nothing that I did wrong because I was, having a lot of thoughts like maybe I did something wrong, maybe I didn't do this right, it's because I was working at this job, maybe I should have left my job, this and that, this would have never happened. Like it was just so many thoughts that were running through my mind at that time um, when they told me that I was going through a miscarriage. So I talked to her and then I called Nart and I broke the news down to Nart. And he was, you know, down about it and i basically boohoo cried to him as well and he basically told me he was just like you know it's gonna be okay like we gonna get through this and when the time is right you know maybe we could try again and i remember mentioning this to y'all in a video where i said like he told me like you know maybe we'll try again now at that time i really wasn't thinking about legit trying again because like i said it was so many other thoughts and emotions I had so many mixed emotions that were going on in my head at that time, y'all, um, that y'all don't even know about. But I just had so many mixed emotions. 
and whenever he was telling me like maybe someday we could try again it's like I had super mixed emotions about that because I was just like I, I don't know because I still didn't know that other situation you know what I mean but I was just like okay yeah you right and whoop the whoop so we talked about that boom we get off the phone my doctor subscribed me abortion pills it's crazy because I still have them abortion pills so when they give you abortion pills they give you like it's like four or five abortion pills in a little capsule. I literally still had them abortion pills. She gave me those because I was doing the at I was gonna do like the at home like whole abortion process because it was like I think it was like three different things I could do. Like you go to the hospital and they can actually like surgically like remove the rest of the stuff out or whatever that needs to be removed um, from your miscarriage. Uh, but I opt to just do it at home. Yeah, I just opt to do it at home. Because I wanted to be with my family. So I actually went to my mama house the night that I did it. I took the pills. Baby, when I tell you that was the worst pain of my life. <laughs> that was the worst pain of my life. I don't know if y'all have ever been through that situation where um, you have a miscarriage. And you basically pass through everything like the sack and whatever remains of the baby that's still within you and everything else but like that is the worst pain ever to do it at home i should have did it at the hospital because i think they say you don't feel it when you do it that way but at home child like that was bad and they say it's supposed to feel like you're having contractions like you're actually giving birth because technically you are you're you're getting rid of whatever is left in you from that particular pregnancy right so I, and you basically stick the pills up your stuff, okay? I don't know if y'all know that, but you stick them up there and like within like a few couple hours or so, that's when like the whole labor process be in. So you're basically in labor. So I was at home. Think about being in labor and not having no epidural. <laughs> like that's how it feels, right? So I knew exactly what it would feel like if I didn't have the epidural. And so that's how I knew like with my second pregnancy that maybe I was gonna get that epidural, okay, period. But not to get off topic, y'all. So yeah, I did it at home and it was the most worst excruciating pain of my life, okay? I was up all through the night with contractions and going to the bathroom. Then I started to bleed heavy and then finally, you know, everything that was supposed to pass through me had passed through me and when it happened i broke down crying again because i was just sad because i'm just like damn like my baby is really gone like my baby is really gone and i just remember praying i just remember praying for my baby and i remember just praying that my baby would be okay praying that i would get through <clears throat> get through my get through that pregnancy and it just didn't happen and i know you're not supposed to question god but in that moment how i felt like i was really <sighs> i was really questioning god in that moment because not only was i losing my baby the person that, you know, I still have feelings for has a baby that could possibly be his. And at this time, I still don't know if it's his baby. But, you know, in a, like I said, in the pit of my stomach, I just knew. He didn't even have to tell me. Like, I just knew. So, I knew in my mind, but it's still nothing has been said yet. So, I'm going through that miscarriage at home. Um, y'all, I hate talking about that. So I went through the miscarriage at home. <clears throat> oh my God, I do not want to cry. So that happened. Let's just get past that because whoo, I cannot stay on that for too long. Okay, so I went through what I went through. You know, God rest my baby, my angel. That is my, I always say that's my other angel looking over me, watching over me. Um in a marriage so yeah so that happened i went through that it was the most worst experience i could ever went through i ended up losing my job because because i went through my miscarriage my doc my job actually let me go while i was going through my miscarriage and my healing process um i did a whole story time on it and what happened with that y'all can go watch those videos i might link them under this video sorry about my baby she loud y'all 
So that happened. So fast forward, I'm going through my miscarriage. I'm still trying to go through the healing process, like not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. It took a toll on me, y'all. Like I literally felt like I lost like so much. And I, I lost my baby. Then after I lost my right when I was in the process of having my miscarriage and losing my baby, my job fires me through it during that time, right? And I'm like damn not only that's happening but this other baby was just born in april that i still don't know if it's his or not because he still hasn't said anything to me so it's just like i'm going through so much internally y'all i had like i felt like i had so much weight on my shoulders like so much weight on my shoulders and at that time i just felt like i didn't have nobody to talk to because Honestly, I was ashamed. I was embarrassed, especially with the situation that NARC had brought to me. And I just didn't know how I would tell other people, you know what I'm saying, that this is happening, you know? Because it would be, I knew that if I told people that it would be so many questions that people would have, like, wait, what? Like, what happened? Like, how, like, how long has this been going on? Like, like, ooh, I just knew it would be so many questions that came with it. That's why I didn't really want to open up about what was going on between our situation. I didn't even tell my family <clears throat> um, what was going on with that situation and what he had going on, possibly. So let's fast forward and let's get to me actually just getting to the nitty gritty and asking him. So I asked him one day we were, um, no, one day I was at home and... At this time, you know, he would always come to my house. And I'm not going to lie, y'all. When I was going through my miscarriage, I went through my miscarriage like... I don't want to say I went through my miscarriage alone because I was at home. Like, I came home here for a few days when I was going through it. But when I went back to my apartments where I used to live, like, I really felt like I was going through that whole emotional roller coaster by myself. Like, I did not feel like NARC was really there for me through my miscarriage at all. Um, because he wasn't, um, it's just like, he was just not really fully there how I needed him to be there for me as, you know, as, your, as my partner, you know, to support me through this because I was really going through it. It was like, it was almost like it was just like another day for him. And that's just not how I felt, you know, cause I was, like I said, I was battling so much emotionally and mentally, um, at that time. So I just felt really, 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 really alone. So yeah, I was at home by myself and I just kept thinking about it like, damn, like, is this baby his or not? Because he has not said anything to me. Like, is this baby yours or not? Like, what is going on? And I started to also notice that he wasn't really... At a certain point in time, he wasn't really at my place, like how he used to be. Like he would come like once. It, it felt like he was coming like once a week almost Um, at some point. And it was just, I just had got this gut feeling. So I was just like, you know what? I, I need to just ask him. I need, because I need to know. I want to know, like, forget all this. Oh, maybe he ain't told me because it wasn't his. Like, no, I need to know. Like, I need it, I need to put my mind at ease. You know what I'm saying? So he ended up calling me and I was talking to him and I just flat out asked him, I'm like, Nark, what happened with the, with the whole baby situation? Like, is, is the baby yours? And he said, Yes, the baby is mine. Y'all, mm, when I tell you, like, my heart fell down to my pinky toe, bitch. <laughs> my heart fell to my pinky toe. Like, I was so crushed. Like, it felt like everything just got silent. When he said, yes, that's my baby, everything got silent. When I say everything, everything got silent. Hold on, y'all. Let me... Yeah, y'all, so everything just got silent when he said it. It got really, really quiet. He was quiet on his end. I was quiet on my end. And I was just like, so the baby's yours. Because I'm really just trying to, like, grasp what this man just told me. Like, of course, I always knew it was a possibility that this baby was his. But just him, like, saying it to me, like, saying, yes, this is my baby, it was just a different feeling, like, because 
is actually being put out there. You know what I'm saying? So, excuse me, baby, y'all. Yeah, so I, I had to repeat what he said. And I was just like, so the baby is yours. And he said, yes, the baby is mine. I said, so when were you going to tell me this? And whenever I said that, he was just like, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I was I was going to tell you. I was, he basically was making it sound like I was going to eventually tell you. Like, he didn't feel like it was no rush or no need to just tell me right away. But I felt like it was. And looking back on it, maybe he felt like he didn't want to tell me because, you know, I did go through my miscarriage. And maybe he just didn't want to put that on me that type of weight on me while i was still going what i was going through mentally and emotionally maybe that could be the reason why he didn't say anything but then again his baby wasn't born at the end of april his baby wasn't even born in the well i guess you can consider it the middle of april so around this time i hadn't had my miscarriage yet so and I didn't have any issues going on at the time where I thought I was going to have a miscarriage. So he really could have just told me because he said he was going to tell me like right when he knew, but he didn't tell me right when he knew. So I don't know. I might have to take that back, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just knew also that even, even though I wasn't having a miscarriage at that time when she actually gave birth, maybe he just felt like, you know, it was going to be hard on me and my pregnancy and he didn't want me to stress out or feel any type of way. I don't know. That's just what I, I'm thinking now, just looking back on it. It could have been, or maybe he was just being who Nark is and just feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to tell her or whatever the case may be. I don't know, child. I don't, I, I'm, I don't live in this man's brain, so I don't know why he just didn't tell me right away. Okay? Because as y'all see, he didn't tell me for like four he didn't tell me for some months that he even had a baby on the way. So, yeah. Oh, anyway, so he told me that we're on the phone. We talking. And it's just silent. Like, he's saying what he's saying. And he's just kind of saying it, like, in a nonchalant way. Like, basically, it just, it is what it is. Because, I mean, it was, it, it was what it was. So, now I really had to face the fact that this is this man's baby. I have to accept it the best way that i could accept it and just figure out what am i going what is renita going to do moving forward with this information do i am i strong enough to stay and work through it with him or do i just need to call it quits and leave because this is just too much for me and i was going back and forth with what i wanted to do i made several videos on this i was going back and forth on what i really wanted to do and at the time so many people were giving me so many different advice with my situation without knowing me and narc's history of course um they was giving me just so many different advice like if you feel like you can get through it with your partner maybe this will make y'all grow stronger together like i'm reading all types of you know, messages and DMs like this, you know what I'm saying? Follow your heart, go with what you feel, da da da, da. Um, But at that time, me following my heart was probably not the best decision that I should have made because my heart was so tainted at the time, like severely tainted, okay? Um, but that's kind of what I did. I was just like, you know what? Maybe this will make us stronger. I'm just going to pray about it. And, you know, if it's meant to be, like, it will be. And it will bring us closer together. And we will be okay. Like, we will get through this. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, God still does not approve of this relationship. He's allowing things to happen the way that it's happening for a reason. Even with my baby, even with me having a miscarriage and losing my baby, y'all. Even though it was hard for me, in reality even looking back on it, it probably was a blessing in disguise. You know what I'm saying? Like, God did that for a reason. Was it hard on me? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Did I, did I want that to happen? No. But like I told y'all many times before, God just never approved of that relationship. So, uh, the more and more God is not okay with something or doesn't approve of something, he's not really going to allow 
it to progress okay so and he kept on giving i kept on asking him at the time even before my miscarriage like give me a sign like is this where i'm supposed to be and he gave me the biggest sign that he could possibly give me um in the beginning well as far as like narc actually having a baby on the way by somebody else and then the next biggest sign that he gave me what baby She's talking to Miss Rachel, y'all. And the next biggest sign that he gave me was definitely my miscarriage, right? So he's just like, he's giving me all these signs. And I'm asking him, like, give me a sign, give me a sign. But also, I'm ignoring my sign. Sorry if I'm looking over there, y'all. It's some over there that's distracting me. But, um, yeah, so I was just in my head at that, at that point in time. And I wasn't listening to God. I wasn't being obedient. Like, I'm just like just ignoring all the signs that he's given me to just be done like move on move forward like just leave this man alone leave this man alone this is not your husband this is not your husband i'm trying to get you to walk with me i'm trying to get you to heal and move forward so that eventually i can bring you who your husband is in the future but this is not that okay he is not your husband and god kept on like pushing that in my head and i just kept on i was what i was fighting god you feel me like and you should not fight and push against god but that's what i was doing at that time oh just thinking back on it like i was really ignoring him y'all i was ignoring him oh i was ignoring him lord jesus forgive me so that was going on i was like battling between that but you know i i stuck with it and i stayed like i stuck with it i stayed i was just like we gonna get through this so when he told me what he told me now i realize why he hasn't been over at my place as often because he is he has a newborn so you know when you have a newborn you know you gotta be there so he's being a father and i don't want him to be a deadbeat dad so i'm like okay like i gotta let him do this you know what i'm saying i gotta just let go and just accept what the just accept what reality is for me right now or for us right now and we just got to come together and figure out how we how we both are going to get through this together and are we going to get through this together because that was also my question like what we gonna do now like what ha what happens now right so that basically let me know like once he told me that that was his baby like the reason why he hadn't been over as often as he had been over why he was probably coming over like literally it, he was literally coming over my crib like once a week and before he was there it seemed like he was there literally every single day and he was only coming over there like once a week so now i know that he's over there you know taking care of his business, going to go see his baby. Also, he's working as well because he does have a baby. So he got to take care of his child financially as well. And just all those things like that. So boom, fast forward, a couple months go by. I'm still dealing with what I'm dealing with mentally and emotionally. Um, but this one particular day, y'all, and I hope I'm not missing nothing because it's so much that happened. If I did, I'll come back and touch up on it. But this one particular day, I was on the phone with Nark, okay? I'm on the phone with him and I'm talking to Nark on the phone and he's telling me about my cousin and how my cousin, uh, one of my god cousins had, uh, what am I gonna call my cousin? I'm just gonna call him my cousin, hell. I'm not gonna give him a name. But one of my cousins had, y'all know Nark does Airbnbs and stuff like that. He also has, you know, the apartment that, you know, I basically told him about. And that's the reason why he had got that apartment. So he has his own apartment that he lives in at this point, right? So, but his apartment, he was letting my cousin stay in his apartment with his pregnant girlfriend at that time when I had called him on the phone. And this was my first time finding this out. And I'm just like, oh, I was like, so, yo, my cousin is staying at your apartment? And he was like, yeah. Now, at the time when he told me that, it didn't really register or click in my mind. Like, if my cousin is living in your apartment, then where have you been staying? Because like I said, he had only been coming to my house probably like 
like once a week or twice a week or like every so often, like he would come to my house. And there were times where I was also going to his house sometimes. It just depends, right? But yeah, like, so it didn't register at the time when he told me that. So he's like telling me the situation and like, yeah, your cousin's staying. I let your cousin rent out my apartment. He's only paying like half right now. And woo do woo 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 So we talking about that. And how my cousin is staying there. Mind you, like I said, it's not registering to me. Like, if my cousin's staying there, where are you staying? Because clearly you're not staying here because you only come to my crib like once or twice a week. <laughs> like, so, and then, I, but I also thought that maybe he went back to his mama house too. Because there was another point in time like where he, he'll stay at his mom's house. Like when he didn't have his apartment and doing the Airbnbs, whatever this may be. So I'm thinking in my head like, oh, he must be. Uh, he must be staying at his mama house while he renting out the Airbnb to my cousin, right? That's what I'm thinking that is going on at this moment in time. So we just chopping it up on the phone or whatever. And he's just telling me, basically just telling me like detail by detail about the whole situation and why my cousin is staying over there, this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, oh, okay, like that's cool. Then that's when my mind starts to wonder like, Man, let me wait. Let me see where this. Let me see where this nigga staying at. Like, because I, I'm in my head, I'm thinking he gonna say his mama house, but maybe he's staying at one of his Airbnbs as well. But I don't know. So I ask him. I'm like, so is my cousin, my cousin staying? No, that's not how it happened. Damn, I'm trying to think exactly how it went because y'all, I don't want to get it mixed up with another time that I have had a conversation with him. That's why I really be trying to trying to think about things before I actually do these videos so I can know like for sure that I got it right in my head. But um, so I basically, I'm sorry y'all, I'm all over the place. But I basically asked him like, like where you been staying? Cause I'm curious, you know. Inquiring minds really want to know. Like I'm very, very curious. Like where, where has this Negro been staying? Okay. So I asked him that, and he was just like, with my son. So when he told me with my son, I'm just like in my head, I'm thinking with my son, cause the way he says, like, well, your son ain't got no apartment. <laughs> Your son ain't got no apartment. He ain't paying rent no more. What you mean with your son? Like, what do you what do you mean you're staying with your son? Because in my mind, like, when you're saying you're staying with your son, you're staying with your son's your son's mother as well. Okay, like that's what that means. Like, so he says he's staying with his son. Like, I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, like so you're over there? He's like, yeah, you know, I had my baby, so I be over there a lot during the week you know, taking care of my baby or like seeing him, you know, helping out, like feeding him, changing diapers and like just doing things like that, you know, cause since I had my baby or whatever. And I was just like, okay. So then my next question was, cause at first when he told me that, I'm like, okay, well it is his son. So he does have to be there. That don't necessarily mean that he's, messing with the girl or he's still with the girl he's just there so he could you know take care of his son right this is this is what i'm thinking in my head like he's just there so he could take care of his son so boom the next question was so you so you've been staying a the night there i said so where do you sleep he said i sleep in the bed Sir, what? Excuse me. Come again. What you say? I I don't understand. Like, what are, what are you saying? I play English. No. <laughs> Did he speak in English? But no, it sounded like a foreign language when he said he was sleeping in the bed. Like, what? What do you mean you sleeping in the bed? Like, what bed? Oh, it's an extra bed. Like, it must be an extra room and an extra bed there or something, right? So that's why I'm asking, like, because I could I couldn't have heard that right. I couldn't have heard that right. So I'm like, in the bed. I'm like. What bed do you sleep in? And he's like, sorry, y'all, my phone's about to die. But he's like, with my son. I said, okay. I said, okay. So I'm still trying to give him a bit of the doubt, you know. So I'm like, so you sleep in the bed with, it's just be you and your son? Like, where does, where does old girl sleep? He was, she was like, he was like, um, well, she sleeps in the bed with me and my son. 
So now, like, my heart's starting to sink a little bit because I feel like I know where this is about to go. So I'm like, okay. So y'all all sleeping in the bed together. So this is like a Brady Bunch thing. Like, y'all really a family over there. Like, y'all really shacking up and shit like that. Like, now it's starting to make me feel like it's it, it's about to be more to this story. Like, this ain't just a thing of where you going over there just to take care of your son. You, I'm thinking maybe you're going to say I'm sleeping on the couch. Because, baby, if we trying to get something you know, trying to build something or like trying to, you know, work on things or whatever. Like, how could you ever be sleeping in another bed with another woman or, or, or being with somebody else? Right. So I'm thinking like, maybe if you, at least if you're doing that, you're being respectful and you're sleeping on the couch. This is what my delusional mind is thinking. But if you know, narc, you know, things ain't what they, things ain't what he is, what they seem. Okay. They just ain't what, what it is. Okay. So he said, I sleep in the bed with my son and, 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 and her. So then, you know, I got to ask the million dollar question. Now I got to ask the million dollar question. Okay. So then I'm like, I'll take a breath. I'm like, okay. I said, so you sleep in the bed with your son. Like it, it's not a problem that he's sleeping in the bed with his son, but it was a problem when he's saying like it's his son and then and it's her. I'm thinking maybe it's she got like a she she big baller, you know what I'm saying? I think it's like a two bedroom type situation, you know. You can go sleep in the guest room, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm thinking it's one of them. So I asked him, I'm like, mm, so you sleep in the bed with her too? I said, so are y'all still messing around like? Are y'all still messing around and having sex? This man said, yeah, we still mess around and we have sex. Yeah, we still mess around and we have sex. Yeah, we still mess around and we have sex. Y'all, y'all! When I tell you, when I tell you, baby, I just saw black and red like i was furious on the inside and the way he said it was so casual like yeah I, I still sleep in the bed with her we still have sex we still doing this we still doing that yeah all that baby ah! all right y'all so i have to stop the video right there because this video is about to be 50 minutes long and my phone is about to die so we're going to come back and I'm going to finish the conversation that we had on the phone that day when I found out that he was shacking up, you know, had his whole little family together and he was still messing with her. Because like I said, at the time, I did not know that he was still messing with her. I thought it was just a thing of like, this is your baby. You going over to take care of him. Okay, you take handle your business. If you are over there, you're not doing no extra activities, okay? delusional i should i should have known better dealing with the man that i had been dealing with for so many years i should have known better i should have known better dealing with nard but that's where i'm gonna end and stop the video at right there y'all and then we gonna come back but i had to make this video longer for y'all because you never know when i'm gonna pop back up because it's it's hard like right now i'm at home alone so it was just a little bit easier for me to be free and talk a little bit louder all right some days i might film videos in the car as well yeah so it'll probably go like that so whenever i find time to get it in i'm going to get it in for y'all all right so just be patient with me y'all please be patient with me all right so the post notification shout out goes to all right so the post notification shout out goes to miss tiana girl i hope i said your name right <laughs> if i didn't i'm so sorry but thank you so much for supporting me and baby girl we really really appreciate you and we love you and continue to support us on our journey god bless so that's who the post notification goes out to shout out to you boy girl man woman whoever you are you know what i'm saying shout out to you and yeah we are still on the road to 10k we almost on the road we almost at 8k y'all i really want to get to 8k like let's just get to 8k can we get to 8k before february i don't know but you never know okay god work be working okay so you never know we on the road to 10k and 15k 20k 30k 40k 50k all k uh, 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 uh. 
all of that okay so yeah but we're on the road to so many k's and we're gonna get there okay we're gonna get there okay but yeah y'all so that is it for this video i hope i wasn't all over the place i'm sorry like sometimes i be having to remember things as i go because y'all gotta remember this did happen some time ago so yeah that's why i be trying to like get everything together before i turn on the camera because child i be all over the place rambling people be like get to the point like listen sometimes i'm not just gonna get straight to the point sometimes i gotta give detail by detail and repeat myself certain times because yeah and some of y'all be needing me to repeat myself okay obviously with some of the comments that i be getting i'll be like did you watch the story time at all like come on now but yeah so that is it for this video like i always say Tell your mommy, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your cousins, and them to subscribe to your girl. Because we stay what? Lit. And we always lit over her baby. And until the next video, y'all, your girl is at. Bye, y'all.